Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is June 15th, 2018. And for this segment, I'm going to address a question that people often ask me at this time of year. What the heck is going on with the Arctic and in particular, Arctic sea ice? Now, this is a good question because we, over recent dec decades, have seen a rather significant decrease in Arctic sea ice coverage of the Arctic Ocean. And we've also seen substantial new record lows reached during 2007 and then during 2012 uh, at the end of melt season during the summertime, which re resulted in dramatic sea ice losses and large areas of open water in the Arctic Ocean. Now, overall, the Arctic is, is experiencing a an aspect of human-caused climate change called polar amplification in which the poles warm faster than the lower latitudes. Uh, and during summertime, there are some effects related to that that tend to occur. Now, for polar ampl amplification, you see most of the abnormal warming occurring during winter. Uh, but during summer, you also see abnormal warming. But what tends to happen is that this abnormal warming it tends to be flushed out toward the continental zones. And so you tend to see much higher than normal temperatures in, in the land regions that are near the Arctic Ocean. And, and the Arctic Ocean region temperatures tend to moderate. And so, so that's what we are seeing now, particularly in the central Siberian region, which is experiencing very warm temperatures and also the near Siberian region of the Arctic Ocean, which is ex which is experiencing above normal temperatures, and and heightened rates of uh, melt ponding, and you can see this melt ponding in the satellite picture, in the form of bluing over the Arctic Ocean ice regions in the near Siberian zone, in comparison with much wider ice surfaces near Greenland and closer to North America and the pole. So now melt ponding is something that we want to keep an eye on during June because it can be predictive of which regions of the Arctic will see large ice losses during late melt season. And so right now it's notable that we're seeing a lot of melt ponding occurring on the Siberian side. Now, in general, we also have some large areas op of open water to talk about. We have a large area of open water that is forming in the central Siberian region near the, uh, in, in the Laptev Sea zone. And in the Karaz and the Karaz Sea, we also see some large areas of open water forming. A large area of open water in the Chukchi has remained and uh, depending on winds and pressure systems, this could form a front for sea ice loss advance over the coming days, weeks, and months. Beaufort sea ice is also rather reduced with a lot of sea ice breakup ongoing in the Beaufort Sea. And both Baffin Bay down here next to Greenland, I'm zooming out a little bit, and Hudson Bay are seeing seasonal rapid ice rates. Uh, so, oh, I'm sorry, rapid ice loss rates. So, and ice loss tends to accelerate at this time of year for those zones. Now, looking at temperatures, I want to talk about how warm it is on the Siberian side. Now, for the Arctic as a whole, it's about 1.6 degrees Celsius above average, which is pretty significant for this time of year. And we know a lot of above average temperatures over the Arctic Ocean on the Siberian side and down in through the near Scandinavian region here in the Barents Sea. So, so this zone is, is warmer than normal, but it's much warmer than normal over this landmass here. And I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit. So, so if you look at these anomalies, they're 20 degrees Celsius and above normal and into the mid 20 degrees Celsius above no normal, that's well more than uh, 35 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. And that is very significant for this time of year. Just to give you an example, where I 
So um, where I'm living in, in Gaithersburg, Maryland, the high for today is expected to be 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And in this zone in the near Siberian region, we're expect. I'm sorry. In the in the uh, central Siberian region, we're expecting temperatures as high as 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's that's much much closer to the pole. And and you would not see those kinds of temperatures typically. So so that's that's very severe warming for that zone. Uh, if similar temperatures were happening where I am, it would be 115, maybe 120 degrees. So so that's pretty crazy. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about what those high temperatures are causing. In particular, what we're seeing is, a, is an outbreak of wildfires in this zone. And I'm going to zoom in. We've got one wildfire that's about 150 miles away from the Arctic Ocean. And that's, that's a pretty intense fire burning there. And we have a, no, a number of clusters of fires they're ranging about 200 miles away from the Arctic Ocean that are similarly intense. Now, the overall fire activity for the Arctic is not quite as intense as we've seen during some recent years, but these far northern fires are a concern, and it's something that we will want to monitor as time goes forward. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about, I'm going to go back to sea ice and talk a little bit about the present state in, compar in comparison with recent years. And so what we are seeing is that present sea ice extent is about fourth lowest on record. And then present sea ice extent in this graph is indicated by the red line. The recent year's lines are in yellow and orange and the lowest sea ice extent that we saw on record for this time of year was during 2016 and that was 10.1 million square kilometers. We're, we're at about 10.36 right now. So as we go forward, we'll be concerned about melt rates, particularly in this window. Melt rates do tend to accelerate in the second and third and fourth weeks of June and continue on through mid-July. So this is a critical time. How rapidly melt accelerates will help to determine where we are at the end of melt season. And right now, looks like we're, if we follow our present trajectory, we'll be close to around 4 million, 4.5 million square kilometers. But I'm not saying that's a prediction. Anything can happen. We could see a new record low, or we could see a bit higher sea ice hill. Sea ice is nothing if not unpredict unpredictable. What is rather predictable is, is this year's end sea ice totals are likely to be well lower than average when you consider past years like the 1980s. Um, and what is a serious concern is, is how rapid those losses are and whether or not we see anything unexpected occur this time of year. So, so far, nothing majorly unexpected, though we do see some concerning warming trends in the Arctic and if those warming trends continue, at the very least, what we are likely to see is much more rapid than normal sea ice losses on the Siberian side of the Arctic. And, and the one thing that we, we, will, we will look at uh, is, is, well, we'll look at, be looking at many things, but the one thing that we'll be looking at in particular is how this trend sets up in the long term. And, and what that does to ice systemically.